the last lecture we have seen one of the main constructional features of a DC machine is a stator cylinder. So, if we take a cross section of that, sitting on some rest, this is made up of iron. Now, this iron is usually solid because it carries DC flux. So, there is no need to laminate this. On this iron body, the field poles which are produced separately are bolted down. The poles themselves are rectangular pieces of irons again normally they carry DC flux. So, are not laminated as such the body is not laminated. So, this is the pole structure which carries the field winding. Field winding is made on a separate cylinder and depending on what type of winding it is that is either shunt or series, the number of turns and the current carrying capacity of the turns are determined. I am showing a winding for shunt connection or separate excitation which are normally made up of thin wires of large number of turns. This winding again of the requisite length so that it can be placed on this field. So, this winding is placed on the field. So, from outside it will look like in the cross section it will look like a body like this on which this field winding is placed. and this whole assembly is kept placed together by set of pole shoes. The whole arrangement is then along with the pole shoe is bolted to the stator core. This is the construction of one pole, there will be similarly a second pole poles as you know comes in pairs. purpose of the pole shoe is not only to hold the field coil and the field pole together, but also to adjust the air gap 
between the armature and the stator pole so that the flux density on the armature surface can be given a desired wave shape. Usually this flux density is trapezoidal in nature. Now, although the main pole body or the back side core of the stator are not laminated, these pole shoes are usually laminated. The reason can be understood from this diagram. In order to accommodate winding, the armature surface is usually slotted. Therefore, the reluctance between the pole shoe surface and the armature is not constant, it varies as there are alternate tooths and slots on the armature surface. Therefore, for a fixed DC excitation on the field coil, the flux density in the field pole, we will also see variation in the same frequency as the occurrence of the tooth and slots in the rotor. So, the pole shoes experiences a flux density waveform which has a high frequency alternating component depending on the number of slots on the armature surface and its rotational speed. So, there is a alternating flux in the pole shoes. In order to prevent a large amount of eddy current loss due to this alternating flux, normally the post pole shoes are laminated. This is one of the salient points about the stator pole arrangement as we have mentioned earlier, the stator may have more than two pole pairs, all of them normally identical. The field windings may be either supplied from a separate source or they may be connected across the armature or in series with the armature giving different possibilities of separately excited, shunt excited and series excited or even compound excited machine. However, the place where a DC machine differs significantly from other types of machine is in its armature construction. We have seen that one predominant feature of the DC machine armature is that it carries a commutator which is necessary in order to change the direction of current flowing through individual coils in a DC machine armature. The armature of a DC machine also differs from the armature winding of other electrical AC electrical machines in the sense that this is a closed winding that is the finish of the winding and the start of the winding are shorted together. 
we have also explained in the last class in the last lecture that there can be two types of winding in a DC machine one is called the lap winding or another is called the wave winding. Let us look at the difference between the two. For that let us say we have a machine with several slots this is one slot second third fourth These are the different slots in this DC machine. Similarly, there are commutator segments. Normally, we have seen that in a DC machine, the number of commutator segments should be equal to the number of coils. A DC machine, a coil is made up of two coil sides which are placed in two different slots. However, DC machines are usually owned for with what is called the double layer winding that is each slot contains two coil sides one on the top and another on the bottom. So, number of slots is equal to the number of coils and hence number of commutator segment is also equal to the number of slots. So, let us say these are the commutator segments separated by insulators. The coils are placed inside the slots. So, this is one coil, they so, say this is another coil side. These are the coil sides. A coil is formed by connecting two coil sides. So, a lap winding progresses like this. This coil side is connected to this commutator segment, the other coil side connects to this commutator segment. Heart coil.
goes to the next. So, this is how a lap winding progresses and finally, the end coil will come here and it will produce what is called a closed winding. So, we see that in a lap winding between two consecutive commutator segments, there are there is only one coil. And if I place one brush here, we have said if the number of poles of the machine is P and number of slots are S, then there are S number of commutators also and between and number of commutator segments per pole will be S by P. So, after S by P the corresponding other commutator will be there. Number of coils are also S by S. Hence, between S by P there will be 1 by P number of coils connected between a positive and a negative set of brushes. So, in a lap winding how many brushes will be needed that will be equal to the number of poles and between two pairs of brushes there will be same number of coils and which will generate the same voltage. So, these coils can be connected these brushes can be connected in parallel. this 2 plus brush will be connected in parallel. Similarly, 2 minus brush will be connected in parallel to give the 2 armature terminals. The plus terminal is the minus terminal. So, if we look at the lap winding the picture arises somewhat like this. This is the closed armature winding. there will be with a four pole construction, there will be four brushes and the connection will be these two will be connected in parallel. Similarly, these two will be connected in parallel. And finally, this will be the two terminals of the armature. So, this is a four pole machine we have mentioned earlier that if the stator number of poles are 4, then the armature must also be wound for 4 poles. So, the total set of armature coils can be divided into 4, na 4 groups, each is wound for 1 pole, a north 
a south, a north, another south. So, this can be pictorially represented by these coils. So, there are four parts, the total armature winding is divided into four equal parts. Each part is on to give a particular pole. Two of these poles connects to one positive brush and two connects to the other positive brush, two of this connects to one negative brush and two of this connects to another negative brush. So, this is the final circuit. So, if there is a positive current I flowing into this armature, it sees four different paths to flow and that is why in a lap winding, the number of parallel paths which is denoted that is by A is always equal to the number of poles of the machine. This is the characteristics of a lap winding. It is easy to understand that in a lap winding, one pole pair, each pole pairs are connected in parallel. Therefore, the it is suitable for those machines whose armature voltage rating is small, but the current rating is large because in this winding number of parallel paths are more with larger number of poles and hence the total armature current is divided into more number of paths, each path carrying only 1 by p times the total armature current. Therefore, this winding is suitable for DC machines that has large current rating, but less voltage rating. The other type of winding is called the wave winding. For this, let us again consider the slots. and also the commutator segments.
the arrangement of the coils are coil sides are same the conductors However, the difference is in this case let us say this is the start end of one coil, this is the finish end of another coil, this possibly produces a north pole here, this connects to the start end of the north pole of the next pole pair. The difference between this skips the south pole here connects to the north pole of the next pole pair that is a coil goes somewhat like this. This is the start of first coil, this is the finish of first coil, this is the start of the second coil. <coughs> the finish of the this coil for a four pole machine will come here and this will connect to this position. So, in this case we see that between two adjacent commutator, commutator coils, there are p by 2 number of between two adjacent commutator segments, there are p by 2 number of coils connected, where p is the number of poles. If there are four poles between two adjacent commutator segment, there are two coils connected. So, this shows that in essence, this wave winding in this wave winding all the field coils, all the armature coils are north pole and south pole, all the pole pairs are connected in series. So, equivalently the armature winding of a wave connected machine will look like this. The two positive ends will come here and the two negative brushes will connect to next two coils this will be the equivalent connection of a wave connected machine. In the equivalent circuit, it will give rise to two parallel paths only. It is easily understood that between two adjacent commutator 
segments there are p by 2 number of coils connected and the opposite commutator segments are 1 by p coils apart opposite brushes are 1 by p commutator segments apart. So, between two, oppo two opposite polarity brushes there are p by 2 into 1 by p that is half the total number of coils are present between any two opposite polarity brushes. So, half the coil is connected between one set of brush and the rest half is connected between another set of brush these are sorted and hence a wave connected machine the number of parallel paths A will be always equal to 2. So, we see that while in a lap connected in a lap connected armature winding the number of coils between any two opposite polarity brushes is 1 by p where p is the number of poles in a wave connected machine the number of parallel paths between two opposite polarity brushes is half of the total number of coils. So, in a lap winding the number of path are parallel paths the number of parallel paths in a lap winding was equal to p while in a wave connected wave winding the number of parallel paths is always equal to 2. Therefore, we can conclude that a DC machine that has lower voltage rating, but higher current rating a lap winding should be used while in a DC machine that has higher voltage rating, but lower current rating a wave winding will be preferable. Now, let us have a closer look on the commutator segment itself. If we look at the DC machine from a we have seen the cross section. Now, if we see the other side view it will look somewhat like this, this is the armature shaft on which the armature is placed which incidentally is laminated because the voltage induced in the armature is alternating in nature. The current in the individual coils are also alternating. So, the armature is laminated the armature coils on the stator body you have the pole shoe running all along which is also laminated this is the shaft, this is armature body.
this is carried on pole pieces these are the windings field winding this is the stator deck iron This is the stator back iron. On one of these sides, the commutators are placed on a separate annular ring. Commutators has two parts, one part is the sliding surface on which the brushes slide, the other part is called the razor to which part the armature conductors are connected. This is the commutator, the brushes are connected in this region, this is the brushes, this is commutator. The shaft is of course carried on bearings on both ends. So, this is how the side view of a DC machine will look like. Now, if we take a closer look at the commutator itself, the commutator ring will look somewhat like this. The commutator is made up of copper segments isolated by this is the razor part. There is a groove here where the rectangular armature conductor comes and connects. The commutators are themselves copper segments 
separated by insulating mica. And as we have mentioned earlier, the number of commutator segments is equal to the number of coils in a DC machine. <coughs> the individual commutator segment is a wedge shaped copper piece with a razor section. This is the an individual commutator segment. This is the razor part. This is the place where the armature conductor comes and connects and these kind of segments are alternately placed one commutator segment and then a insulating material. and then another commutator segment to form a cylinder and this whole assembly is then clamped on the same shaft as the armature. The brushes are carbon brushes and spring loaded so that they maintain a good contact and the graphite brushes they provide for good lubrication so that the commutation can be smooth. In addition to these major constructional features, there are few other constructional features that are important for good performance of the DC machine. These are called, one of them is called the so called interpole. So, if it, this is the stator of the DC machine, let us say it is a 4 pole DC machine, then there will be one main pole, pair of main pole, two pairs of main pole. This is the pole shoe. and this is the field winding then this is let us say the other pair this is let us say north pole is the other part of that pole pair This is the south pole. In between these, a short in protruding pole structure is introduced between each of these pole pairs. This is called an interpole. The requirement of this interpole is to aid in commutation. We have seen that the brushes connects to winding whose coil sides are at 
interpolar location. Ideally, the voltage induced in these coils should be 0. However, because of current flowing in the armature, the coil undergoing commutation does not have a induced voltage of 0 because the armature the flux due to the armature current which is called armature reaction distorts the field flux in the interpolar region. So, there will be a net voltage induced in the coil undergoing commutation which may give rise to dangerous sparks and over currents. In order to neutralize the flux in the interpolar region a interpol with the requisite number of turns and connected in series with the armature is introduced. So, that it neutralizes the distortion of field flux due to armature current in the interpolar region. So, this is the purpose of interpol. In addition to interpoles, there is another winding which is placed in series with the armature. It is to be understood that due to armature current flowing the distortion in field flux occurs not only in the interpolar region, but also in the polar that is under the pole also there will be some distortion. In order to compensate for that, we put what is called a set of conductors, pole faced conductors so that it compensates for the in the main field flux due to the current flowing in the armature. This flux is also connected, these coils are also connected in series with the armature. This is called the compensating winding. So, to summarize we can conclude that the main constructional features of a DC motor are a stator core then field poles. which has several parts one is the pole, pole shoe and winding then interpoles armature winding then commutators brushes compensating winding. These are the primary electrical components in a standard direct current machine.
and are to be found in one form or other in most of the DC machines. The purpose of these items are the stator core provides a return path for the field flux, field hole produces the field flux, interpoles are necessary in order to compensate for the distortion in field flux due to armature current in the interpolar region. Then armature winding carries the current, voltage is induced in this winding and is required for generating the EMF or producing the torque. Commutators provide for direction of current change which is necessary for the operating proper operation of a <coughs> DC machine. Brushes provide moving contact to the commutators and hence to the armature winding again a compensating winding which accounts for which compensates for the distortion in the field flux due to armature current in the polar region. So, we will in the next few classes we will discuss how and what exactly will be the expression for induced voltage and torque in a direct current machine. We will also find out why how to calculate the ampere turns for the interpoles and compensating windings.